Are we working now, Jarrett? All right. It's surprising how much better stuff like that works when it's plugged in. Um, <laughs> um, but to reiterate, we're back where we belong. We're back here again, and everybody's well and doing well, except for those that are out. We've already decided what we're going to do with Sister, uh, Sister Donna when she returns, that she needs to be wearing the proper garment and to be shouting unclean when she enters the sanctuary uh, among us so that uh, we, we know who the sick people are, you know. Very, very troubling time for illness in our country. Um, Psalms chapter 18, we made it to the end of it. We, it, we, it was a long and rocky road, but uh, we did uh, make it to the end. Um, Psalm 18 being the culmination of the previous chapter, Psalm 19 offers um, some newer insights and some that we've already kind of dis uh, discussed. Um, we won't go through review of the last couple of verses of Psalm 18 because of how differently we did the service uh, a couple of days ago. Plus, we didn't have less than half the class here. So um, we'll just go ahead and launch right into Psalm 19, which is a Psalm of David. Psalm 19 is, from my study of it broke down into basically three different sections. There are There is a section regarding um, nature and creation, specifically outer space, if you will, the heavens, uh, uh, speaking of God. There is a middle section that runs from about verse 7 till you get to um, verse 10 or 11 that talks about the the written uh, word of God, and then uh, a final verse of um, asking for aid and heeding the word of God from uh, one of God's servants, and the possibility of something that David refers to in um, in verse twelve as secret faults. So we'll uh, we'll get to all the different uh, different pieces here in just a moment. But the first verse of Psalm 19 says, "The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day, uttereth speech, and not unto night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their and their words to the end of the world. In them hath He set a uh, a tabernacle for the sun." which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. There is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Now, especially verses, I'd say verses 1 through 3, um, are, are fairly familiar uh, pieces of Scripture and often used as a... Uh, a a biblical jumping off point for a lot of scientific explanation on why the Bible is right. Now, I am not one of these people that necessarily believes that science has to has to fully align with Scripture for for the Bible to be correct. But oftentimes, if you it, it, a lot of times it is our failing on the side of science. Um, Oftentimes, you will find that those things line up. But when, when people in the Middle Ages believed that the earth was flat and were telling Christopher Columbus that he was crazy because he was going to sail right off the edge of it if he went far enough, the Bible already told that it was uh, told us that the earth was a sphere that, that, that hangs upon itself. That, that there was that there is a uh, that, that the sun and the constellation and, and this is this is this is my personal opinion and I don't think I'm going to run into many naysayers here but if you believe in aliens that's your own thing but I don't think that the the planetoids I don't think that the stars I don't think they I don't think they harbor extra life the Bible specifically says they're for us to count seasons and to count days and to know how things are specifically these verses these first uh, six verses here talk about the sun. It, it, it says, uh, the, and, and not the son S O N, not not Jesus, but it actually says S U N. It is the the uh, brilliant daylight piece that we get uh, once every twenty four hours, and it will. It, and it talks about its track. It goes from one side of the heavens to the other, and all these these pieces. But all of this 
is so that we can look at it, and, and mankind has been doing this for thousands of years. They look to the heavens. They see the vastness of all that is above us, and they man assumes that there's something else out there. Now, what we assume is out there is predicated upon our own fallen nature most of the time. Um, the Greeks believed that there were uh, there were a pantheon of deities that would that that could and would come to their aid. Uh, the Egyptians, specifically uh, looking at the stars, believed in a single deity that uh, stretched over the heavens and made and whose 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 fe- the, it was a female female uh, goddess uh, that whose body stretched over the heavens and was covered with stars and uh, uh, and that the sun was a god unto itself. Um, and I think in the modern times, in the age of enlightenment, in the age of, uh, 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 as Barney Fife would say and Andy Griffith show, the age of electronal marvels and science know-how, um, that, we, uh, that we believe in, that, that people look to the stars and aliens. Uh, there is something great. But, but one thing among all of these that align together is that man does look to the heavens and think there's something bigger than me out there. Now, the purpose of that was for us to look at the heavens, to behold the majesty of all that is out there, that, to know that God created all of these things just, just because He could, just, 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 just because it was at the whim of His design. And yes, He wanted us to have uh, basically celestial timepieces, but even, even more than, even if it, could, it could run on its own track. It could, it could run on a, on a chaotic route, and it wouldn't, but God did all of this just so that we could look up and say, look how great our God is. Look how, look how, look how, look how massive and unfathomable He is. And yet, He seeks after the cares and wants and desires of little lowly me. This is not always what takes place. And, and a lot of what... They say that science disproves the scripture, or history disproves the scripture, or anything is 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 a lack of understanding on our part. A lot of the things that people will say about that have been disproven by other people. Uh, you know this uh, uh, this whole uh, the, the theory of evolution, which first it, it is it's called a theory for a reason. It's uh, unfounded in any fact. Um, uh, is 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 taught as fact in our schools and in a lot of modern school systems. Uh, did you know that what is taught about what's in the center of the Earth? There's no way to prove it. We 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 teach as fact that the Earth has a core and a mantle and all that. We don't know. Nobody's ever been down there. How how, how do we know that? How, we we assume a lot of things, uh, but it is our it is those assumptions that make us say, well, this must be an out uh, this. Four to six thousand year old texts must be out of date because the facts that we're coming up with now don't align with what what is in here, and it usually doesn't take many many generations before somebody runs across some new fact that says, "Oh wait, the Bible was right all along," and and we were just too stupid to see it. Verse seven says, "The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure." Making wise the simple. Now, <coughs> the um, verse seven starts a series that it really goes back and forth um, through uh, verse nine of giving different names to the scripture, to the the law of God. In David's time, it would have actually just been the Pentateuch. Um, it would have been any prophets that had existed, but I don't think any of the either major or minor prophets had lived yet. Uh, maybe Job. Maybe Job, uh, uh, but even that one is, is, it would be debated. Um, but he's, he, he, the, the scripture, at least that David had at the time, and I think we could, uh, we could apply it to our, the Bible that we have now, because it's all the same, same author, really. Um, you could uh, uh, is given multiple names. First of all, it's called the law and the testimony. It's given two different names here. First of all, it says the law is perfect, converting the soul. Now, the law of God, and most often when we think of the law of God, we think about Moses coming off the mount with the Ten Commandments uh, held in either arm. There's a whole lot more to the law of God in the scriptures than just those Ten Commandments, but 
the New Testament says, uh, Paul said that the, the law was a schoolmaster, that the law, the law teaches us to be a better sin, a sinner. But in addition to being able to do that, the law also points a finger at us. The law lets us know, and, and, and it, I think David points it, it says it's perfect. The law lets us know in no uncertain terms that you, Larry Lafferty, will never be able to live up to God's standards. That it is impossible within yourself of your own ability and your own power to do that, to, to accomplish that task ourselves. And to every other man, woman, and child born on this planet, the same can be said of. That it, we are incapable of it. Now, it goes on, it says that it is perfect converting the soul. The law does leave a big opening there. It says you can't do it. Then Leviticus, and, and if you <coughs> watched, um, uh, watched or uh, attended Brother Jarrett's uh, Sacrifice of Christ in the Old and New Testaments class, the law said here is what you can do to try to have a stay of punishment, to, to, to plea for mercy. If you do X, you must bring turtle doves. You must bring a kid. You must... and and and, and as we saw in that class, they, they all had to be sacrificed, all in a special way. There were different types of meat offerings and drink offerings and, 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 and bullocks and calves and goats, but none of this would suffice. It left us with an open, but the law does do one thing. It points forward to, to a, a possibility of someone who can, who, who has the ability to fulfill what you are unable, unable to fulfill. It, and it points to Jesus, and I think that's what David is referring to when he says to the, com, uh, the converting the soul. And it says, The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Now, it refers to the Scripture now in, in a testimony. A testimony is a witness, a, uh, an, an, a, 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 an accounting of events that have happened, a, 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 co a confirmation of things that you know or don't know. When they call for a witness to the stand in a trial, what do they They need more information. Oftentimes, <coughs> excuse me, my throat, uh, hopefully I can make it through to the end of this. Um, unclean. Um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, a, a lawyer will call a witness to the stand. Why? Because he's trying to make a case. He needs information A, B, and C so that he can turn to the jury and say, obviously, the conclusion must be D, right? And that witness is supposed to, um, in our judicial system, uh, swear upon a Bible or promise that they will give the truth to the utmost of their knowledge. So they, the, the lawyer asked for a testimony. He says, where were you when the events of this trial took place? While I was on the, you know, I, I think in this classroom I gave in, given the uh, the example of an of an auto accident and how there's so many different perspectives um, that you can see on that. And eyewitness accounts are some of the worst that you can get. <laughs> they say they, they they say they're the most unreliable. But if if there was an auto accident and me and me and Tim Barrow, we've seen plenty of auto accidents in front of the shop, but. We've never seen any auto accidents in front of that shop. We don't want to be called in. We don't want to be witnesses uh, to that stuff. And if somebody comes in there saying, what, what about this accident? What accident? Does, was there an accident outside? Um, uh, but what they're looking for there, what they're looking for there is a testimony. They're wanting us to say, this is what happened. This truck pulled out of Brigham's, and this car didn't slow down. And unfortunately, physics and nature must have has to rectify the situation of two objects trying to exist in the same space at the same time by fiery vehicular destruction. And that's what happens. And... The word of God, and, and and I think he reiterates it by saying, "Making the why, making the why, uh, uh, making wise the simple," is a testimony of things that you know, things that you don't know, and is a teacher. 
in 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 in, in events. It, I mean, look at. I would say one of the greatest testimonies you're going to find are probably those first four gospels of the New Testament. They are eyewitness accounts, and well. Mark seems like it may have been written a little bit later, but to to the best of our knowledge, they are they are witnessed accounts of how Jesus was born, he lived, he died, and rose again. It is a testimony of the life of Jesus Christ. It is it it it, it and and that fact is supposed to um, uh, will bring will bring great knowledge. The, the scripture is full. I mean, look at Proverbs. The Proverbs is 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 full of. Of, of, of wise counsel from a man who, whose very own uh, gift was the wisdom of God. Uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, the psalmist uh, says that in, in, in verse 7. Verse 8, the, uh, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejo- rejoicing the heart. Now he calls the scripture statutes. <coughs> a statue is a precept or a rule or a um, a foundational piece of law that we are to live by. I'm sure, uh, although I couldn't name any uh, for Dover, I'm sure that there are, there's a statute book somewhere out there that's supposed to tell us uh, what is okay in Dover and what is not. I, I, I like every now and again you'll turn up on Facebook or some other places, Five states that still have ridiculous laws, and you'll see, you know, where you're, you know, in, in in X state, you're still not allowed to spit on the sidewalk, or you can, or you, or you have to go to jail for five days, or something, so stuff that nobody is keeping up with anymore, to be sure. But these are these are laws that are there for, uh, and 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 probably in the time when people were spitting, they were probably worried more about tobacco juice. On, on their good clean sidewalk uh, uh, when, when they were put together and th- it was it was something for these people to live by these are uh, and, and, and it says well it's supposed to make make you rejoice and and this is a problem because I think the statutes of God is something that we don't rejoice by very often right. because they're they're not they're not in the eyes of the flesh a pleasant experience they're not in the eyes of the flesh, a place for us to, um, to 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 dance around and to and and uh, and to have a big um, what is the word I'm looking for here? It, it's, it's not a big party to serve God to do the to do the things right the way that He says to do them right. You know, it's it's very difficult some days to make yourself get out of bed and say, "Today is Sunday, today is church day. I am a Christian." And, and not only do I need to be there, I want to be there. And your flesh says, but it's also 6, 5, 6.30 in the morning. It's the weekend. You could just sleep your way through the rest of the day. But the Bible says that you're not supposed to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. The, the, the Bible says that Jesus, it was his custom to visit the temple on all the Lord's days. So... What is the statute there? Well, it probably means, Brother Ken, that on Sunday we need to be in church. Uh, and 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 that's not and, and that's a very very uh, something that I would consider a very very simple statute of the scriptures that people ju- like liter- legitimately cannot live by. <laughs> something something that at least in, in, in my mind of the hierarchy of God's law, that I would consider somewhere on the range of, well, if you spit on the sidewalk, you're going to spend five days in jail. No, but you shouldn't spit on a sidewalk. Everybody knows you're not supposed to spit on the sidewalk. Don't spit on the sidewalk. Everybody knows you're supposed to come to church. You're supposed to be at church. You're supposed to, when the doors are open and the lights are on, hey, it means it's time to be here. And yet, here we are, five days in jail. How is that possible? Well, it's because you don't. we don't rejoice... We don't glean re- joy from following that stuff. It, it is a burden upon us. It is a it, it is it, it it is something that we feel like constrains us, nags us, and 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 the only reason for that, dear friend, is because we find ourselves so entrenched and our fingernails so deep in the cake of this world that pulling them out means we're going to have icing and cake all over our fingers. We're so wrapped up 
in what's going on here? Of course God's law is a, is, is a restraint because it's flying right in the face of everything that you want to do. It's like that, uh, that, that comedian in, 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 that, in that one movie that says, let's just do all the things that you want to do. Of course, let's let's do let's do all let's uh, your 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 flesh your your flesh is desirous of uh, uh, it wants to sleep in on Sunday it wants to uh, you, you run around half naked in the summertime because it's hot it's it wants to it, it wants to uh, it, to, uh, to to cuss to lie to hate it wants those things. And, and and I'll readily admit I'm I I will find myself in those states. Why? Because I'm still human, and I'm I would I would willing to be willing to bet the honest among us would also say the same thing. That is our nature, and so it's very difficult for us to look at the statutes of God and rejoice in them. How do we do that? Well, we need to get closer to God and further away from the world. And the wider we make that separation, all of a sudden coming into church is a happy thing to do. You want to be here. Why? Because I can fellowship with my brothers and sisters. I can sit and I can worship my worship God Amen. with with his people in song and hear his word proclaimed. And, and I can and I can re- regain rejuvenation. And I can be happy about that thing. Mm-hmm. I can feel the beating sun on my fully clothed back and think, this is what God wants me to do. And moreover, because of how science works, the sweat that I'm holding in with my clothing will keep me cool just the way that God intended it to. And be happy to do those things. We don't find ourselves there very often. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening, enlightening the eyes. And... Commandments and statutes, they, they fall... In fact, in the business, if you look up Synonyms and antonyms, they're not that far apart from each other, but a commandment is, is, is so much... A list of rules is one thing. A commandment is a guiding order from a higher power to do it. Brother Junior served in our nation's military. If a sergeant or a lieutenant or something told a low down private hey go over and do that what was what was the job what was now that lowly private's new duty what, what whatever that order was just to go and find and do it i've heard way too many stories in uh in uh, uh, about boot camps and different stuff about moving dirt piles from one end of a one end of a, a row of houses to the other and you know what you're going to do in the next day you're going to move it back to where it was before why just cuz that's the order and what, are, what is, what is th- there's nothing to be gained by moving a dirt pile from here to here and back again. There is nothing to be gained in the eyes of those that are moving it. But if nothing else, it is teaching the person receiving the order, when I say something, you do it now. Brother Larry preached, uh, preached about Jonah today. And Jonah had a big problem with moving dirt piles, didn't he? When God said go, Jonah said Why? Worse, Jonah said, I'm just not going to do it. In fact, based on my historic, historic knowledge of the ancient world, he said, I'm going to go as far away as I possibly can in the known earth from where God is. Jerusalem is here. I'm literally going to the gates of the Strait of Gibraltar. And beyond that is just ocean, as far as we know. They had no idea about the Americas. And I'm going to be literally as far from God as I possibly can be. And that was Jonah's plan. Jonah didn't like the commandment of God. But you know, when Jonah followed the commandment of God, I think this verse is very apt, he did receive some enlightenment. The, the story of Jonah has always haunted me, especially the way that it ends, because God ends with a question to Jonah. Do you not have any compassion at all? I mean, possibly. The way that we behave sometimes, it definitely feels that way. When God seeks to command us to do something, when Brother Kenny, when he says, you need to go to Paris and start a church in Paris, <coughs> that 
is a that is a duty that is clear, that is easy to easy to run with. You you know where your goal is, and you have to get there. But sometimes the commandments of God are not going to be so straightforward. They're going to be go somewhere you don't want to go for seemingly no reason whatsoever for a result that you're never going to see. It is literally the spiritual equivalent of moving dirt from here to here. You don't know the design behind that. You may never know the design behind that. And you know what? The design alone from God may be this. I just need to know if he will move the dirt pile whenever I say to, whenever I say to do it. Will my servant serve me at my commandment? Also, more importantly, a lot of time when we follow what God has commanded for, we will receive something from it. It says that it, that, that, that it will enlighten, enlightening the eyes. Brother Ken, following the commandments of the Lord, have you learned anything from, from doing that? I know I have. It's not easy. It's not fun. It's not, it, 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 it's, it's not a bed of roses, but the wisdom that you gain from following those commandments, and they're not going to come as audible as, as uh, 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 come over to Macedonia and help us. That's, it, it's, it's, sometimes that's not going to happen that way. That's why that I think that David was comparing to a lot of Scripture because a lot of our commandments are going to come from right here. You're going to be reading along and think, this is something I just have to do. This is something I have to go and do right now. And it's going to speak as clearly to you from here as if God said, uh, uh, Macedonia needs your help, Paul. Get out there and start doing that thing. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. The... The scripture here is referred to as the fear. The fear of the Lord is clean. Learning about, what was it? Um, is it, it's, it is in Proverbs. It was the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That, that, uh, the learning about, learning about God will and I think that's why he he just calls it fear. Learning about God will elicit that type of fear. There are some times that I sit and I study upon especially when I think about the the fathom fathomless blah, 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 you know you know what I mean. He is fathomless uh, of of God. When I think about those things and I think about him uh, Trying, trying to compress in his mind, not having a beginning or end, filling up, filling up the world, and 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 the Bible says that, that that the earth is his footstool, a small thing, a thing that he can prop his feet upon. When I try to fit all that in my mind, it makes me very fearful because then I have to think if he's that big, <coughs> how small am I? How little am I? More importantly, how stupid are my ideas when I come back at God with, I don't want to do that because X, Y, and Z. I don't want to participate because of X, Y, and Z. It doesn't matter what you think. It says that it, the, the fear of the Lord is clean. I think it's very purifying to be scared of God. I think it's very, and honestly, I think I think fear of God and fear of His punishment. This is I will tell about my personal salvation. I won't I won't put in the words in anybody else's mouth, but being scared of what the punishment for my never dying soul was was a big contributing factor to me on my road to, to salvation. It was a, it was a big, you know, the flesh doesn't understand very much, but it understands pain. It understands punishment. We've all been hurt. More importantly, we've all been burned. That punishment and that fear led to my ultimate purification. I'd lay awake at I'd lay awake at night after hearing the preach uh, the preacher preach hell is as, as, as hot as it ever has been, and think I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna close my eyes and I'm gonna slip right off this mattress out in it. It was terrifying, but it was enlightening. It took my old filthy rag of a soul and it said, let's give this thing a polish. Yeah. 
the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Now this, I think actually you could connect four and five, uh, 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 the early part of nine and this together <coughs> because fear is one thing. But his judgments, and you could link this to the final judgment in Revelation. You could link this to uh, you know any of you know the past judgments in the Scripture. What what does God think about so sodomy? Well, I can turn you over to Genesis, where there was an entire city of them, and God had one thought about them: I'm going to destroy them with fire and brimstone, and anybody that even looks at the destruction turns to salt. That's what God thinks about sodomy. Moreover, that's not that's not a hateful God. A lot of times they, they, they'll, they'll, they'll say the, the, the Hebrew God is a is a is a hateful God. The Hebrew God, and, and they always refer to it as a Hebrew God. I think there's there's something very specific about that. But or the Christian God, they'll always refer to it. They'll always refer to it in such an offstanding, but, but that that he's hateful, that he's mean, that 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 he that he's homophobic, that, that, that all these things. Put whatever coat of paint on it that, that, that makes you feel comfortable because this says that all of those judgments not only are, are true, they're righteous. Everything that he has decided, everything that he has decreed, uh, all the punishments that he set forth for those that he deems uh, sinners and for those that he de 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 deems beyond sinners like sodomites and calls them abominations, that those people... He's right in doing so. If I make something with my own two hands, and I have done this before, make something and just step back. Pat Ball's done a lot of woodworking. He probably could relate to me on this. Just step back and think, that's the, that's the worst thing I've ever put together. I can't, I, I can't believe I spent three or four hours, and, and this is what I have to show for my work. And because it's my work, and because it's abhorrent to me, I am within my full right as the owner and creator of that object to destroy it and however I seem fit. Now, when I had a wood-burning stove, most of the time it was chucking into the fire because it just felt good to watch it disintegrate. And God, on a very similar level, when He looks down at mankind and sees them doing abominable works, He says, you're mine, you're my creation, and I, as your creator, see what you are, know what you are, you're an abomination to me, and I will cast you into everlasting fire, and I am justified yeah. in doing so. Right. Why? Because I'm the creator. I made it. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Now I think... He, He's talking about all the scripture when he talks about this, about the value that you can find here, the everlasting quality of it, and the uh, what we can glean from it. In fact, this end of the where he talks about also uh, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. If you look at Revel, I think it's Revelation chapter ten where he tells him to eat the book and it's sweet to his mouth, but it's bitter on his stomach. I think I think it's possibly a callback to this very verse where where he where he where he eat where he eats the book and it's and it's sweet. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in the keeping of them is is great reward. So David sums up everything that he's talked about in the scripture so far in its value, in its perfection, in its perfectness, and he says, they're for, they're for a warning. These are stop signs upon the road that, that we lead down. If, if, if I was driving down the road, we were talking about driving on 24 and 40 before the class started. I'm driving down the road. 24 kind of starts running up in the mountains, going toward Chattanooga, driving along. And I see a sign on the road that says, Rock Slide Ahead. My first inclination is not, Rock Slide, let's put the gas pedal to the metal. Let's get down there to it. No, that's a warning sign letting me know, hey, there's unstable ground ahead. Moreover, some of it's out in the highway, and if I crash into it, that's going to have to be one another one of those little physics re resolutions. You're probably going to end up melding with the stone. In the very same way, David says, hey, this, this is a warning sign. 
We should not take the Bible as, well, this is a list of rules that we're being forced to live by. No, this is, these, this is a, 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 a book full of warnings. Hey, if you flee this, if you don't do that, if you don't do this, first of all, your life's going to be a lot better. And second of all, David finishes up the last part of that verse and says, there's great reward. Yeah. We're not doing this for nothing. We're so defeatist. We're not do, we're not we're, and we're not even doing anything necessarily for right now. Nothing that I am doing today may ever turn out to anything in my lifetime. I firmly believe though, and this is not me touting myself over, making myself feel bigger than I am, but I firmly believe that every good work that I'm doing here for the Lord and justifiably so, I am gaining something over there. That's that's a that's a promise. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, Brother Junior, the same thing for you. Sister Abigail, the same thing for you. The things that we do here affect what we get when we get home. The parable of the talents is very clear. You use stuff here, you try to double it up here, and when you get, when the king comes, he's going to look at how well you've done, and he's going to say, all right, you've, you've done pretty good with some small stuff, with, with, with the itty-bitty things. Now let me make you a ruler. That's how it works. That's, that, 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 that's, that's not Adam Lafferty making up stuff based on some, a couple of verses he's found. That's Bible. That's Scripture. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back thy ser- the servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I, sh- and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Now David says, who can understand his errors? And I don't think he's talking about God's errors. There's a lower ca- lowercase h. That means he's talking about your errors. Who can understand some of the stuff that we get into? I know that I've gotten off in some stuff where I thought, you turn around and you think, how did I get here? There's no way, it's like a series of unfortunate events. There's no way I should have arrived here based on what happened, but somehow we're here. And then he calls him, cleanse me from secret faults. I think these are those things that deep down we know are a problem for us and we just won't or can't admit it to ourselves. It's too dark. It's too it's too black for even you to look upon. And they influence how we do things in our lives. A little niggling in the back of your skull that says, "Why don't you try that out?" No one will ever see. And we and we look at it on the face of it and say, "This this is this is not even something I would think to do. This is not something I would, no." But it's it's deep. It, it, it's it's the nature part of you. It is it, it, if if I I'm not going to give any kind of fre- uh, credit to Freud, but I've said it most of the time. It's that ego that 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 deep down uh, he'd call it the lizard brain part of you. But I, I'll I'll say it's just the most base part of your sin nature that is shockingly sinful. And David's asking for cleansing from that. The part of his sin nature that that drives him to do things that are that are that are important. How do people? And I've seen it. If you you look, you don't have to look far on the news either. Uh, 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 these different religious cults, or, or and they do awful things to each other, awful things to other humans, stuff that you can't. Mothers putting their children in microwaves and starting the oven. What part of them makes them think that that's okay? There was mental illness. I, I don't think so. I think that is the the last state of the most worst debauched part of man that does it. It's the same thing that allowed people to put their babies on the arms of Moloch and watch them immolate against the brazen hot arms. It's that very same debauched part of our nature that allows us to do things and. This is the worst part about it. Separate and apart being saved by God, that's who you are too. Social nicety, civil law, 
keeps most of that at bay. But every now and again, you'll read a story for, on, on the news in this country about people doing terrible things to each other. And you think, how, how does this happen? Why? Because these people ain't been cleansed from their secret thoughts. There's that, 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 that base part of who they are. Keep, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. David asked for forgiveness for his sins. He look, and I think at the top of the chapter, he looks at the most wide form of the law of God, the presentation of God, the stars in the heaven. He looks at the most, the very most specific look at the law and power of God. He shows you the scripture. And then he says, all of these things show me who I am and Lord help me because this is not a place I want to live in. Because middle of that verse he says, then shall I be upright. If you can just forgive me, Lord, then I'm going to be upright. And I shall be innocent from the great transgression. And, and then verse 14, he wants to be able to let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. We have to give up all of that other stuff so that we can sit and we can, we can have that, you know, honestly, Eden-like walk with the Lord. Be able to take God by the hand and he takes us by the hand and, he sa- and, and you can say... Good, dear Lord, my day's been rough. And he says, I know, child. It's going to be okay. He's going to pick you up in his arms and carry you. But you don't arrive at that place of safety by clinging on to everything that the Scripture says, hey, that's not right. We can't, we can't do it. Look at the law of God. Look at the statutes. Look at those commandments. Follow. Because in following is great gain. Moreover, by, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Brother Larry's charge to Brother Ken in his sermon, in, in, in his sermon talked about finishing strong. To finish strong, you must run. The, par- the, uh, the, the, the fable of the tortoise and the hare, why did... The hare not win because he couldn't finish the race. By the time he awoke from his slumber by the tree, the tortoise had already won. He was already far out and ahead of him. None of us can fit. And I think this is where we live. This is where Jonah lived. We're not even starting a race. We won't, we won't follow. We're like, a, we're like an old mule. We're just going to be stubborn. Any questions, comments about today's lesson? Brother Ken. Verse 7 is one of the first verses. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. <clears throat> the word there, law, um, I think it's true that it does apply to all of the teachings of the Bible and all of the scriptures. But I think there's a special emphasis applying to the law of God as found mm-hmm. in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And um, he says that it's perfect. So the problem is not with the law. Mm-hmm. The problem is with us. Right. He says that the law converts the soul, converting the soul. Well, we know that that can't be talking about um, the conversion that takes place when the Holy Spirit regenerates someone. Right. Because the law does not convert us. Mm -hmm. What converts us is the gift of faith and repentance. And uh, therefore, this converting must be the process of converting. And and yes, conversion is a one-time act in the sense of faith and repentance, but there's another type of conversion that takes place throughout our whole life as more and more we turn away from mm-hmm. the from the things of the world and we turn to the things of Christ. And um, I said all that to say that I think that um, a lot of times people minimize the role of the law in the life of the Christian. Yep. It's true that, yes, the law is a schoolmaster. Yes, the law, we can, ever, we can never keep it perfectly. But God has given us the law to, it's, it's kind of like uh, the ideal man. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like... Uh, who are we supposed to live like? Jesus Christ. Well, what did Jesus do? He, he lived the law. He perfectly obeyed the law. So if we're going to be Christ-like, it's, the law is like a practical guide on how to live like Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and I think Paul lays that out so beautifully in Romans 
where he says, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Mm -hmm. So a lost man hates the law of God. He has enmity with the law. But when God saves someone and he gives him a new new nature, he loves the law. Now, the, the his flesh still wars against the yep. law, but his spirit loves the law. And so all Christians should want to keep God's law. We should want to live by God's law. And by keeping God's law, what we're doing is we're yielding to the Holy Spirit in sanctification and becoming more like Christ. Right. And so I, I just I think we need to make sure that we don't minimize oh, yeah. the law yeah. in the life of the believer. Yeah. Well, and 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 Jesus Himself t uh, told them. Well, uh, uh, the people that ask Him, well, uh, how, how how do we keep the law? Is it, uh, the 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 greatest commandments are this: love God and yeah. love man. And He summarized the, the entire the yeah. entirety of the law yeah. in in a, a handful of sentences. Right. And love the Lord your God, commandments one through four. Love your neighbor as yourself, commandments five through ten. <laughs> and and Leviticus, Exodus, and Leviticus, and 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 the and parts of Numbers and Deuteronomy are all a a fragmentation of those ideas. The, right. the taking them out to the furthest degree, uh, it, you wouldn't think that you'd have to tell someone, well, uh, it, it's it's it, it's wrong to do this because it's wrong to do this. It's also wrong to do this, this, and this that are attached to it. But that's kind of what the rest of the law is. It's very and very important to uh, to look at that. And I think I think I think Paul specifically was uh, he didn't he didn't want the law specifically when it comes to circumcision to bind the Gentiles down right. but he wanted people to know the significance of it because he speaks a lot about it in his, in his um, yeah. in his own writings um, but then you then again you have to be careful too when it comes to the law that you don't end up like I think like the Church of Jerusalem and some other ones that, I mean, even in modern times, where they say, "Well, actually, keeping the law is all you need to do. This is this is this is where this is where you need to come from." Right. It's 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 fine. It's of course, as of all things, finding balance <laughs> between <laughs> between all those things. Any other questions, comments? Good discussion. Good uh, good reading. We'll come back next week. Psalm chapter twenty which is only nine verses, so we'll be sure to try to stretch those out as far as we can. Uh, uh, remember, if, you, if you're going to participate, the class is going to start on Tuesday. Um, and if you wanted to, and this is mostly to you, Brother Ken, the recording of the ordination is going to be up on our YouTube channel. But I'm doing a lot of stuff on it, like I'm going to have all the questions appear on screen as they come, because some of it's not clear and whatnot in the back background of the recording because the audio just wasn't where I wanted it to be. So it may be a week or two before that shows up on our YouTube channel, but it will be there. I have not forgotten. You are dismissed. Have a great week.